now talk about the measurement of blood pressure using carrot cough sphygmo manometer measurement of blood pressure and the instrument that we are talking of is sphygmo manometer which was developed by Nikolai Korotkov. Before we actually uh, take the procedure, we need to know what exactly are the parts of this instrument. This instrument has a long tube which has various <coughs> markings and these markings are in uh, or according to the millimeters of mercury. This tube is connected to a bulb-like structure in which mercury is held and from the top it, this bulb-like structure is connected to another tube. So here, let us write down some values, that is 50, 80, 100, 120, 160, 180, 200, it can go a little higher also like this, so 200, 240 and all this. <coughs> and these values are in millimeters of mercury. This tube, let me use another color for this, this tube is connected to a cuff. So there is a cuff here which is wrapped around the upper arm and attached to this cuff there is one more tube and this tube is connected to a bulb like structure which is actually a pump and this pump has a knob or a regulator. So here is mercury. This is the pump. And this structure is known as the cuff. Now, what exactly is going to happen is this cuff is wrapped around the upper arm. In this part, the cuff is wrapped tightly. Then by pressing the pump, this cuff is inflated. So step number one, as we're discussing the procedure and as we have seen or we have uh, discussed in the previous segment that this measurement of blood pressure is indirect, which is known as osculatory method. Osculatory method means indirect method. The blood pressure is not directly method, measured. It is converted into air pressure and then we measure. So this method. Now first step. Step number one. The cuff is wrapped around the upper arm. Wrapped around upper arm. Upper arm means we are talking about this part, just above this joint, the hinge joint, elbow joint. In this part, the upper, this cuff is wrapped around. Then, by pressing the pump, it is inflated. Inflation of the cuff. The cuff is inflated. And when we press this and this gets inflated which is around the arm, we find that the mercury starts rising in this column. We let the mercury rise up to 200 millimeters of mercury or two millim uh, 200 millimeters of mercury, that level. So when this cuff is inflated, mercury column rises and we will let it rise to 200 
millimeters of mercury. The reason why it is allowed to go up to 200 because at this pressure, the radial artery, it collapses. That means there is no blood supply coming to this radial artery. So at this pressure, radial artery collapses. And that is why we let it go up to 200. So what have we done to measure it? This cuff is wrapped around the upper arm. After that, we press this pump. The cuff gets inflated and because of this inflated cuff, the air pushes this mercury and the mercury column starts to rise. We let it go up to 200 millimeters of mercury. The reason is because there is air pressure which is pressing our upper arm. At this pressure, the radial artery which is towards our thumb, it collapses. That means there is no blood supply coming to this arm region. Now next thing, the pressure is slowly and gradually released using this knob. Now, there are two things or three things which are to be done simultaneously. When this is done, the bell of the stethoscope is kept in this part where there is brachial artery. So when we talk of the arm, this is the part where we tie the cuff. The bell of the stethoscope is placed here. So at this pressure, there is no pulse, no noise or no sound which is felt through this bed. Reason? There is no blood supply coming to this region. At this pressure, the artery, the radial artery has collapsed. That means there is no blood coming in here. So when the bell is placed here, we don't hear anything. There is no sound here. Now the pressure is slowly released. That means the mercury column starts to come down. As it comes down, at a particular level, we hear the first sound. So next step is release the air pressure. And air pressure is released using this knob slowly. As soon as we do this, the mercury column starts to fall. And the bell is still here. The place where there is brachial artery. No sound is felt. At a particular level, the first sound is heard. That is the systolic pressure. For example, if the first sound is heard at this level, which we are talking of a normal individual. This is the first sound that we hear using that bell of the stethoscope. This is known as the systolic pressure. So first sound gives us systolic pressure and in case of normal healthy adult this is going to be 120. Let the bell be here slowly keep reducing or decreasing the pressure from this knob the mercury column keeps coming down and now at a certain pressure we find that the sound gets muffled it gets uh, sort of it disappears that pressure gives us the second sound or the second pressure that is diastolic. So first sound when we hear at that pressure that is our systolic pressure. When sound gets muffled, that means it gets feeble or it disappears. At that pressure or that pressure is giving us diastolic pressure. In case of again a normal individual, it's going to be around 80. So the procedure is very simple and we are measuring blood pressure by transferring that pressure exerted by the blood through air to push the mercury column and that is why we are calling it an indirect method. So what have we done? In this spigmo manometer, there is a mercury column in the tube and the tube has markings. These markings are in millimeters of mercury. There is a bulb which is filled with mercury. Attached is a cuff to this bulb of mercury. Same cuff is attached to a tube and at the end there is a bulb. The bulb which acts as a pump has a knob 
by which the pressure can be released regularly slowly first thing we wrap this cuff around the upper arm in this part by using this pump the cuff is inflated and because of inflated cuff we feel tightness in this part of the arm we let this mercury column rise because when we are inflating it the air is also pressing this mercury column so this mercury goes up we let it go up to 200 millimeters of mercury reason is at this pressure that much pressure when exerted here the radial artery collapses that means there is no blood supply to this part now after that the pressure is slowly released using this knob of the pump the mercury column starts to come down we have to keep observing the level and keep listening to the sound using stethoscope at a particular pressure we hear the first sound a knocking sound that pressure is the systolic pressure and then again keep lowering it keep releasing the pressure as the mercury column comes down at a particular pressure again we have to keep watching here and keep listening also using the stethoscope at a particular pressure that sound it disappears or we call it it gets muffled that pressure or that marking gives us the diastolic pressure so we use sphygmomanometer and stethoscope to measure this and this sound the sound which we hear it is also known as Karatkov's sound because he was the one who was able to detect or measure systolic and diastolic pressure and the uh, instrument which we are using is the modern uh, modified instrument that was modified or developed by Karatkov. Now the factors which would affect blood pressure. Normally we hear people saying that I have blood pressure. Everybody has blood pressure and that normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. This is millimeters of mercury. So when people say I have blood pressure, they are not talking about the normal pressure. They are talking about the higher pressure which is known as hypertension. So higher blood pressure that is more than normal is called high blood pressure or hypertension. Now what is the reason for this blood pressure to increase? One factor is age. As we get older, the walls of the arteries, they become more and more rigid or they lose their elasticity. So when the blood is pumped with force, they are not able to stretch to withstand that pressure. That means now the pressure exerted by the same blood on the same wall of the artery is more because artery is not having its normal elasticity. So with age, blood pressure increases. Age is a factor. So if we say a 45, 50 year old person goes and gets his or her blood pressure checked, the value is going to be different from this. The value can be 140 over 90. Again, unit is same. And the doctor says that this is normal. On the contrary, when we are using the normal value, we are saying it is 120 over 80. But that is for a normal, healthy, young. This is normal for a person who is like around 50 years old. Because at that time, the arteries, their walls have lost or have started losing their elasticity. The second factor could be stress. Stress is a very, very important factor which is responsible for hypertension. Whenever we are in a situation of stress, we know we have a stress hormone called adrenaline. And adrenaline has a property to increase the blood pressure. So due to adrenaline this is the second most important factor and the third factor is if certain substances get deposited into the blood vessels 
The conditions are known as arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis. We will talk about these in detail when we come to the uh, disorders related with this system. So, atherosclerosis and arteriosclerosis. These are the factors which increase the blood pressure. And normal blood pressure is this much. Blood pressure can vary depending upon our position. Like if blood pressure is measured in lying down position, it's going to come different, slightly lower. In sitting down position, it's going to or it should come to this. So position also affects and that is why doctors take blood pressure or they measure blood pressure during different positions depending upon the need or what they think is the most appropriate way of measuring blood pressure for that particular patient. So this is how using sphygmomanometer we measure the blood pressure.